Good evening, Kingdom Citizens, or maybe good morning based on where you are and what's happening in your life right now. I'm delighted to be with you uh, once again. Uh, thank you for journeying with us during the month of June. What, what a wonderful journey it has been to celebrate uh, fathers and men as a whole. Would you join me in a word of prayer? And Father, as we come to the end of these lessons, I do pray that you would bless the men of Jehovah, the Sumter community, and the men online who will uh, view this Bible study. I pray, God, that you bless us to be godly men, spirit-filled men, men, Lord, who will live lives that are pleasing in your sight. Again, Lord, help us to be better as we seek a, great, a greater vision for your glory. For us in Christ's name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Um, our emphasis for the month of June, uh, Kingdom Men Empowered to Face the Challenges of Living Transformational Lives. I hope, brothers, that you have recommitted yourself or committed yourself this month to living a transformational life. For Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I'm going to focus on verse 2, and he says, And be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Verse 1, though, says, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, or I beg you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. I went back to verse 1 because you can't be transformed unless you are willing to present your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. Uh, I thought for the month is kingdom men, must strive to appreciate, accept, and live spirit-filled lives. You must, we, we must be committed to living spirit-filled lives, passing on the power of transformational living to young men and boys. Brothers, we ought to be able to say um, to young men and boys that you can live a righteous life. You can live a pure life. You don't have to be involved in the sexual revolution. You can live a godly life. You don't have to lie, cheat, and steal. You can live a life that is pleasing in the sight of the Lord. So there's just so many ways that, that you can do that. And we, as older men, we then want to be an example to you, and we want to challenge you and tell you, not only can you do it, but you can do it better than we can because you can learn from our mistakes. My desire and my prayer for every man uh, in our church, in our community, and every man that views this online, that you will live a transformational life. But not only that, you will be helping somebody else, a younger man or, or a younger man in the faith, live a transformational life. If you're 30 years old and you've been a Christian for five years and you now have a new friend who is 51 years old and he's only been a Christian for a month, then that person, although chronologically he's not younger than you, but spiritually he is, and you can help him to grow spiritually. Our words throughout this month have been with, um, wise instructions, discipline, and brotherly love. And, and brother, I got to say this to you. It is very important that we love one another. We're not talking about same-sex relationships. We're not talking about anything freaky. We're talking about loving and caring for one another. And, and this lesson is simply entitled, Men Helping Men. Men Helping Men. And ladies, I want to applaud you because this is something that you do well. You do much better than we do. You care for one another. You love on one another. You, you, you encourage one another. We, we think that uh, as men that we're supposed to be strong and burly and hard and whatever else, and yet we need the help of men in our lives. We all need to be cared for and cared for well. We have three questions to consider, as we normally do. These are our launching questions into the lesson for today. The first one simply says, uh, what are some ways men can help each other? Okay, what are some ways men can help each other? So I think one of the first ways that we as men can help each other is that we can pray for one another. OK, not only can we pray for one another, but we can encourage each other in righteousness. OK, so uh, uh, Christian men ought to be saying, speaking righteous things to other Christian men. A Christian man should never tell another Christian man to do something wrong. To lie, cheat or steal 
A Christian man should say, hey, this is the right thing, and you need to do it. Example. So you come up to one of your brothers and you say to him, man, this, 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 this new chick on my job, or this new girl on my job, uh, she's giving me a lot of attention, always smiling at me and whatever else. And your first words to him should be, and you have a wife at home, is that right? Pointing him back to where he needs to go because what, what the devil will do is he's going to put in front of us things that we're going to like to draw us away from what we know that is right to do. Every Christian man ought to have a home. He ought to be a husband and he ought to seek to be a godly husband to his wife. Some of you I know, your wives are maybe deceased now, whatever else, but you still should look to be a godly man in the way you live and the way you carry yourself. Um, I think that, you are, that, that another way you can encourage each other or we can encourage one another is by sharing time together. If you know me, anything about me, I love sharing meals with other brothers. I love the conversations that we have over a meal. I learned a long time ago through a group I was involved in in college called the Navigators, that uh, one, of the, one of the most comfortable times that you can build relationships with others is over a meal. People talk about things over a meal that they don't, they don't, they're not going to just talk about with, in a regular conversation. So, so sharing, together, sharing time together. Uh, some of the brothers here uh, have gone on fishing trips and uh, have either shared breakfast or, or lunch, and, that, and that's great too. Uh, again, you can go to sporting events together. But sharing time together, sharing life together. And then, as Christian men, we can encourage you by working on projects together. Working on projects together. A good friend of mine was at the house recently, and I, I, I had a project around the house that I needed an extra couple of hands with. And, and he was willing, and we, we did this work together. That builds relationship. That, that's talk time. That's encouragement time. Uh, we, we, we work on things together. And not only ought we work on things, we can, we can change the oil in a vehicle or, or we can work on a project around the house in the yard, but we can work on projects around the church. Brothers, the church needs your volunteer labor. And you and I need to look for ways that we can do that. Um, no, question number two says, what are rewards, uh, what are rewards of sowing and to other men uh, you have received. What are some of the rewards that you receive from sowing into the lives of other men? One is um, prayer partners. Uh, I, have a, I have a few. Somebody even dare say I have too many, but I have a few. I have a few prayer partners. Um, some I pray with more often than others, but I have a few prayer partners that I'm extremely grateful for. And I have three men that I pray with every week. Um, that's just a part of our lives, and, and so we are, we, the three of us are journeying together. Um, uh, the other thing is we share life together. I mentioned that a minute ago. We share life together. Uh, uh, couples can uh, go out on, on, to dinner together. Uh, a, a young man who is engaged or is dating a young woman can have, share a meal with a, a couple that's uh, a little bit farther down the road than he and his fiancée might be. Uh, again, sharing life together. What are some of the things that you're doing together that, that builds relationship? Now, let me just tell you this, and this, uh, this is the good and the bad of the situation. The closer you get to people, and this really leads into our lesson today, the closer you get to people, the more sparks develop in your relationships. Okay? So you can expect that. That's just a part of life. Um, but if you build a good relationship, then it can, uh, uh, can, it can weather the sparks that are there. And then um, um, uh, support. When you and I, one of the rewards of sowing into the lives of other men is support. When you support another brother, more often than not, that brother is going to support you when you're going through challenging times. I love this last question, and of course, it's a, 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 it's a reflection question. It's a, um, one of those questions to think about. Uh, that you don't have to, it's not for you to answer for me as much as I want you to think about what the question asks. The question says, what are some reflections of your character that others experience? What is it, what is it that God is putting you or developing you that others experience because of you? I hope that one of the things that other brothers get from me is joy. If you know anything about me, you know I enjoy laughter. 
I enjoy laughter, but it comes from a sincere place. I don't, I don't like dirty jokes, but I love clean jokes, particularly ones that's got a good punchline. Uh, uh, so I, I, I enjoy it. I love, one of my favorite things uh, to do is to watch comedies on TV. I, I like good, clean comedy, which means I don't watch any of the new ones because they're all filthy. Most of them are very filthy. Uh, I watch a lot of the older ones. Uh, uh, and uh, just pure comedies, natural silliness. Um, I, I hope that one of the things that my character reflects is uh, commitment, that I'm a person who's committed to what God has called me to do. And I'm a person who, if I am your friend, you have a good friend, okay? I, I don't profess to be in close friendship with everybody or every man, but there are some men that I have deep, abiding friendships with, and I thank God for them. Um, brothers who, as the young people say today, who have my back and I have their back, okay? Uh, someone said one time, uh, you need a brother in your life who you are willing to uh, trust your wallet with. If you had to go someplace and you couldn't take your wallet in with you, you could put it in this person's hands and you would feel secure with that. Um, I hope that uh, another thing um, as a reflection of my life would be generosity. That generosity, that I am willing to share what God has blessed me with and not at a small level, at a, at a big level. I, I want to give more and more. I want to give more and more to ministry and I want to give more and more to people. Okay? I, that, that's just who I am. I, and I hope that's something that comes across pretty clearly. And then faithfulness. I, I want a testimony of faithfulness throughout my lifetime. A faithfulness to God, faithfulness to my wife, my son, my grandson, a faithfulness to my, my immediate family, my extended family, and a faithfulness to uh, both my friends and my church family. I, I want to be a person who is faithful that I am dependable, that I am truthful, that you can count on me. Our text for today is an Old Testament passage. Many of us as men have heard, or we've even memorized, um, verse 17. I I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit, so he who waits on his master will be honored. As in water, face reflects face, so a man's heart reveals a man. And of course, the Proverbs are, as uh, many have said before and have taught us before, the Proverbs is what is called, uh, have many pithy sayings. In other words, Typically, a message is within one verse. You know, it's not like uh, the narratives of the Old Testament or even the, the parables of the New Testament. You don't have to read the whole story to get the message. Uh, much of what they're saying here is in, the writer is saying, is in one verse. Let's look then at the, uh, the heart of the lesson as well as the introduction. Um, the, the heart of the lesson says, men building character in each other. Men helping to build character in each other. The book of Proverbs is a powerful book of wisdom and is intentional about growing kingdom men in the Lord. Although this book begins with a title ascribing its Proverbs to Solomon, it is certainly clear that Solomon is not the author of all of the Proverbs, uh, all of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs are written um, to give, uh, as it says in um, chapter 1, verse 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So Proverbs are designed for prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. In fact, a lot of the Proverbs begin by simply saying, um, uh, uh, my son, hear my words. Uh, uh, Proverbs is, uh, uh, focuses much more on a young man than it does on a young woman. There are some, there's some definite principles there for both, but it's a father, much of it is a father talking to his younger son. Um, the older father trying to impart wisdom to the younger son. 
One thing I've learned in life, um, and, and I, I heard this and I read this when I was younger, maybe a teenager, an early uh, young adult, a 20 something, that the older you get, the more you realize you don't know. Well, that didn't make any sense to me back then because back then as a 20 something, well, you know, I, I knew it all. I mean, I knew the right answer to every question uh, that you certainly couldn't ask me a Bible question I didn't know the answer to. I, and I knew what every family should do. You, you tell me what the problem is, I'll tell you what the answer is. Well, now that I'm 60 something, I realize that I don't know as much as I thought I did. And I, so back then I had a lot of knowledge, but over time God has given me wisdom through some of the life situations that I have encountered. And I dare say that God has given you wisdom through some of the life issues that you have encountered as well. Uh, in verse uh, 7, 1, 7, the author says, in fact, this verse is where the book gets its overall theme of wisdom. In order to receive wisdom from God, the believer must have a reverence for God that includes submission to his leadership and obedience to his word. So, so, so brothers and sisters, let me just ask you this. Do you have a, a reverence for God where you are submitting first and foremost to his leadership? And that is as simple as saying, Lord, I'm going to follow you. Show me the path that you want me to follow and obedience to his word. Because trust me, God is going to lead you. God is going to lead me through his word. Again, the believer must have a reverence for God that includes submission to his leadership and obedience to his word. Please don't miss that. Number one, kingdom men realize that they can help uh, each other. Kingdom men realize that they can help each other. And can I just say one more thing about that? Not only that, but every kingdom man needs the help of other kingdom men, other Christian men, other believers, other followers of Christ. The text says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. The text, um, uh, the, the phrase sharpens another points to the idea of development and molding of character to be like God. I love that. I love that. Points to the idea of development or the development and the molding of character to be like God. Question, brother. Question, my brothers and my sisters. Do you want to be more like God? Then it's going to take some molding and it's going to take some development. Kingdom men know the importance of men helping men and they realize that this process takes mental and spiritual enlightenment. Mental sharpness, come, mental sharpness comes from being around uh, good people. A meeting of minds can help people see their ideas with new clarity, refine them, and shape them into brilliant insights. Well, that's, that's a powerful statement by itself there. A meeting of the minds can help people see uh, their ideas with new clarity and help them refine them as well as shape them into brilliant insights. Have you ever had an idea about something? only to get into a conversation with two or three other brothers and walk away from that conversation with a whole new perspective on what you were thinking. The author continues, this takes or this requires partners who can challenge one another and stimulate thought. People who focus on the idea without involving ego in the discussion. Woo, woo, woo. How do you get men together who share ideas without ego getting into the discussion? That's a challenge right there by itself. And by the way, someone said one time, if you're the smartest person in your group, there's a good chance you need another group. You ought to be a part of a men's group or men gathering that stimulates you and challenge you to be better than what you are right now. I hope that you haven't gotten to the point where you think that, hey, I got it all together. Uh, that's, a, that's a death point right there. Um, and, and it continues, 
that we, in this growth process, then we, we, uh, we don't attack the thoughts of other people. We consider them. I don't have to agree with your thoughts in necessarily, all of your thoughts, or, and I'm not going to, to be your friend or to, or to be able to help you, and nor do you have to agree with all of mine. You, I, say, I say all the time, if, if two people are talking and they're, they're constantly in contact with each other and one person always agrees with the other person, it seems to me that one person is unnecessary. Every once in a while, you need to say, huh, but what about this? You know, there needs to be a different perspective. Um, two friends who bring ideas together can help, uh, can help each other become sharper, can become more God-centered. And, and several of these thoughts come from the a a Life Application Bible. The text uses iron as an example because when iron is rubbed against iron, it, sh it shapes and it sharpens. I love those, I love those words there. Those are, those are good words there. It not only shapes, but it sharpens. And the reality is, brothers, all of us need to be sharpened at some point. We all get dull at times. I don't care how long you've been in this Christian race, you can get dull at times. So you need, you need someone to come up close to you and, and, and help to sharpen you. Now, some of you may not understand this concept um, in the sense that I do. I grew up on a farm. I grew up in the country. So we were, back then, we, we didn't have the kind of money people have today. So we were always repairing and sharpening tools. We, we, we probably had an axe for 10, 15, 20 years. We, we didn't buy a new axe every two or three years. And back then, we used an axe a lot. When, when, when the handle got bad, we put a new handle in the old axe. But one of the things we had to always do was get the blade sharpened. Or we had to sharpen the blade. And when you sharpen the blade the sparks will fly. But if the blade is sharpened, you're going to be able to do more work with less effort. We, you're going to do more work with less effort. And as the author says here, when iron rubs together, when iron hits iron, it both shapes and it sharpens. It both shapes and it sharpens. Kingdom men can help each other improve when they discuss Pray, critique, suggest, and share ideas with each other. That's very, very important. We ought to be talking. We ought to be having conversations. Um, someone said that, that small people talk about other people, but intelligent people talk about ideas. I, I love that. In other words, it doesn't mean that you don't mention other people, but what it means is that your focus is not on um, your focus is not on, oh, you know what, I, I, saw, I saw Brother so-and-so, I saw the police at his house the other day, I, I wonder if, what, no, 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 no. That, that's not my focal point. What are you developing now? What are you working on right now? What's the last great book you read? Um, are, are you working on a new degree? Or are you you're trying to get a new certification on your job? Uh, have you decided you're going to move into management? Or what, what have you decided about your career? We need to be people, we need to be men of ideas. And we need to be men who love discussing the Bible that we might get a better understanding of God's Word. Who are you helping to transform into the likeness of Christ? Who are you helping to transform into the likeness of Christ? You've got to care about somebody else other than just yourself. Number two, uh, kingdom men realize that investment of sowing. They realize the, 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 the value of investing as we sow into the lives of others. In the Bible, we learn uh, a spiritual principle of sowing and reaping. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The text says, uh, 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 he who tends a fig tree will eat its fruit. And he who looks after his master will be honored. This is Proverbs 27, 18. Kingdom men and leaders deal with lots of problems and concern. Somebody say amen. And it can be easy to overlook people who labor and seem to be insignificant, but have fruitful input and abilities. 
One of my, one of my spiritual fathers in this church is a man named Deacon Johnny Washington. And, and our hearts connected several years ago, and it's, it's, just, it's just been that way. We, we kid with each other, we give each other a hard time, but there's just a special love that God has given to us for one another. And I've just seen how God has worked in his life over the years, and apparently he has seen the same thing in my life. And I thank God for this man because he's been a constant example. Not a perfect one, but a, but a good one. A man who loves his family, who loves God, who loves his church, who loves the people of God. This man has invested in me in so many ways. Some days he'll just send me a text to encourage me, and other days he'll send me a text just to make me laugh. Uh, but I appreciate him so much. So brothers, if you want good to grow in your life, you got to give good out of your life. In other words, you're going, if, you, if you want encouragement, what do you have to do? You have to give encouragement. It may not be from the same person that you give it to, but you need to do that. And finally, number three, kingdom men realize the importance of godly character. And now this is, this is the kicker, brothers. Because all that we say is not important until we look at what we do. If, we don't, if what we are doing doesn't match up to what we say, people are not going to be listening, will not be listening to us. They will not listen to us. The text says, as water reflects the face, uh, so a man's heart reflects the man. Um, in this verse, the writer uses water uh, and its ability to reflect as an example to show the reflection of one's heart. The condition of a man's heart indicates true character. Jesus said, it's not what goes into a person that defiles that person, but what comes out of that person. And he says, what, what comes out of us sometimes is pretty ugly. Uh, stealing, adultery, fornication, uh, uh, envy, pride, and the list goes on. The condition of a man's heart indicates the character. Kingdom men understand that godly character must first come from the heart. It's got to be in you. You're not going to do right unless do right is in you. The heart is the core where the Spirit of God reflects himself in the world. Just as water reflects a person's face, so does a person's heart or mind reflect the true character of the person. What I say and what I do are very important to who I am as a person. Final question. As kingdom citizens, uh, or final thought, as kingdom citizens, we must always reflect the character of God, which means that's something you have to work on every day. So brothers, sisters as well, have you had a devotional time today? Have you, have you committed your day to the Lord in prayer? Uh, have you prayed for someone else? And have you thought about who you're going to reach out to today to encourage along the way? It is important that we do these things daily. We need to read the word. We need to pray. We need to be in fellowship. And we need to tell someone else about the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers, the challenge before us today is this. You are a man and you know a man. Men ought to be helping men. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We praise you, we honor, and we adore you. And I want to thank you, Lord, for making me a man. And so I pray, Lord, that I would reflect your character in the way I live and carry myself today, and that I will build somebody else up. Father, I know there's so much going on in our world today. There's so much death and devastation, so much trouble and, and violence, God. But you're still on the throne, and you are God. And help us as the men of God to live like we are men of God. For us, in Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen.